Stranger Things 4, episode 4, review. <laughs> So Max has realised that she is in danger because she's targeted by the uh, grandfather clock that was also stalking the other victims. We don't know what the significance of the clock means. My guess is that it's uh, to let you know that your time is nearly up. I first thought maybe it was into a time travel, but I think it's more this fact than saying, I'm coming for you. <clears throat> and I wonder if they had looked at the clock, the hands on the clock, you know, would it have told you how much time you have left? You know, I haven't, I haven't really got to see. Well, we have seen, but I didn't really pay much attention to the hands on the clock to see. What the time was because it's more like why is there a clock there and I, I couldn't take the clock seriously it was it was hilarious to see it popping up there <coughs> there's this clock following people around stalker clock max managed to uh, find out that the, all the ones that were killed by Vecna were also patients with the uh, what appears to be the school nurse the school psychologist and they're all having having similar symptoms and max realizes that she's having the same symptoms that they had so she's like oh shit they all died Vecna's coming for me, what do I do? I have 24 hours to live. Shit. Nancy and Robin discover that Victor Creel is still alive and being held at an insane asylum. They plan to pose as students from a different school, like a university or something, and they basically manage to convince the, um, well, the, <coughs> the, the director in charge that uh, they want to write a thesis on Victor Creel about, you know, what made a guy like, what made a guy like up there snap and murder his entire family. And they managed to bullshit their way through it and convince him to let them have a 10 minute talk to him. But he starts to clock on, because Nancy, not Nancy, Robin makes a mistake. Uh, she gets one of uh, the her lecturer's names wrong and he starts to, the uh, alarm bell starts going off in his head that these two girls might not be from the university that they claim they're from. So I, I knew right there and then that they were, they were caught. But he plays it off. They buy his bluff that they like, oh, he doesn't know, he doesn't know. Oh, he knew, he knew. So the prison guard that uh, Enzo, yes, Enzo, that is uh, helping Hopper escape, informs him that Joyce has arrived in Russia or Alaska to go and rescue him. Joyce and Murray meet Yuri, who is the pilot that's meant to fly them all away. At first, he wants to count the $40,000 cash that um, Joyce has brought them to make sure that it all adds up before he takes them out. And he offers them coffee. And I, I knew something was off by the guy, you know, they really shouldn't be drinking the coffee that he's offered them. Especially Murray, I'm surprised that he drank it because he's a, cons a conspiracy nut. And he was absolutely friggin' right what he said to, jo to Joyce in episode 2 or 3. Episode 2. <coughs> They'll try to capture them as well. Because Yuri realises that by handing in an escaped prisoner, Handing in two Americans, as well as informing the warden of the prison camp that one of the guards is being bribed and is betraying him, he realizes he'll get like two or three times the money he was as what he would have if he just let Hopper go. Joyce and Murray pass out from drinking the coffee. Um, Joyce realizes that the it was drugged, and the guy betrayed them, and he's going to hand them over, and they'll definitely see Hopper again, but they won't be able to escape with them. So Max then realizes that Vecna is coming for her and she writes letters to all of the friends. So Max realizes that Vecna is coming for her and she writes letters to all of her friends, even one for Billy, who was a statistic asshole in the second and third seasons. Um, and she reads his letter to him at his grave. And then all of a sudden it gets dark and Billy appears. Max thinks that it's Billy's ghost and he's busy saying, you don't mean all these words that, you know, <clears throat> we have been good friends or, you know, a real brother or sister. Uh, you were relieved that I died that day and you didn't jump in to stop me from being killed by the mind flare. I don't know, I'm a two minds about that there. I mean, I, I, I didn't really care about Billy after the way it was in season two and three. I, and I wasn't sorry for him whenever he died. I really, I was Irish relieved because he was such an asshole, you know? Yeah, he had that redemption arc and he didn't necessarily want to destroy the world, but the guy was an absolute dick. He was dangerous. He couldn't trust him. I knew it wasn't Billy. I knew it was Vecna taking Billy's form because before Vecna kills the victims he likes to torment them about the past trauma in their lives. I don't know why he does that. <clears throat> That's just one of his things. He likes to do that there before he murders them. And at this point uh, Max is pretty much at death's door. So um, he's chasing her through the upside down and she's trying to find a way out and she can't realize that she's just trapped. And at this point he's just toying with her like he toyed with the all ones. 
And of course, that's plot armor for Max because it's given her time that they need to figure out a way to escape. So uh, at the graveyard, Steve notices that uh, something's wrong with Max. She's in like a trance. Her eyes are looking up here, and they're, they're all white. Well, you still see the color, but it's just, you know, you can tell she's not all there, but she is there. And at that point, after talking to Victor Creel, Robin realizes um, that certain music can affect uh, the human brain in ways that other music and people's voices can't. So uh, Dustin really was her to try and find a solution, you know, because they know that they're speaking to Victor Creel and there's a possibility they might have learned something. And she, light bulb moment, clicks. The one way they could probably try and save Max is if they figure out her favourite song and play it there. So Dustin rushes over to Lucas and asks him what her favourite song is and it turns out it's running up that hill. And they put it in a tape, put the heavens on Max's head, uh, play it, and then at that point she's levitating in the air because I think Vecna is, has something to do with it there while he's strangling her in the upside down. And whenever she hears the music, uh, it opens up a portal where she's able to go back to her body in the real world. <coughs> so Vecna is standing there and he's trying to torment her and convince her that, you know, there's no way out of this here. You're done. And then she closes her eyes and starts to think of all the good times that she had with the characters uh, over seasons two and three. And I really like that flashback montage. It's nice. It's really heartwarming the way they do that there. That, you know, Max, her life wasn't all bad. You know, she made new friends in Hawkins. They're all like pretty much family to her. They're more family than they are friends. And then she manages to stab Vecna, uh, break free and runs. And just with that flashback montage, the music, the cinematography, the editing, perfect, spot on. You really are rooting for Max. I can imagine that a lot of people are probably screaming out of their screens, run, 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 you bet, run, run, run. You know, and have her running in slow motion, which makes it more dramatic. And she does get back. And then in the air, she's still loves it, and then she just drops to the ground. I was thinking that the whole group were going to catch her because the height, I thought she was going to go higher, higher, and higher and fall and break her legs or something, but no, that didn't happen. She didn't break her legs. She fell and she had a soft landing on the grass. But that was that was class, seeing that there, the way that was pulled off. So uh, Jim Hopper gets his, um, his shackles smashed by the other prison guard. I'm sorry, my cat just farted there. I don't know if that was picked up by the microphone. Yeah, you don't know he's looking at me. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you. I'm making a video here. Do you mind? <laughs> he gets his chair broken and he runs to the cabin. Oh, he's going to come over here and probably rub against me now. So Hopper runs to the cabin and he takes out the other guard. And the other guard fires his gun off, which draws all the other guards over to it. And Hopper notices that there's dynamite. So he lights the dynamite. Uh, climbs up through the roof, and as the guards reach the cabin, the dynamite goes off and kills them all. <clears throat> and then he jumps down and reaches a snowmobile, I think, and drives away all while the other guards are shooting at him. And the prisoners are all cheering him on for getting away. Bring your stick over here, are you? Dick. Um, I love you, really. So Hopper reaches the church, which is the rendezvous point that uh, Yuri, Joyce, and Murray were meant to meet him at, and he finds uh, boxes a mattress and quilt and he finds peanut butter and opens it and just sticks his fingers in and eats it and honestly he, he, he nearly cries, he nearly does, he's so happy because he's probably been trapped there for about a year and all he would have ate was probably bread and soup and just water and finally to have something different like peanut butter, something different, he just, it makes you really appreciate you know what you have, the food that we get to have every day, different meals and all properly cooked for us. You can go to your shop, pick it sweets, get coke or something like there, and we take that for granted in the society that we live. But for someone like Hopper, who's been held captive for almost a year, if not more, and he's just been eating the same thing over and over again just to survive, and he's pretty much starved to death. Not starved to death, but he's starving. He doesn't get enough to keep him going. And then they eat peanut butter. You just see the look on his face, and he is just happy. So at this point, uh, Yuri phones Enzo, the prison guard who was helping Hopper, and basically that's on. Yeah, um, I realise I can get more money by telling them that Hopper is an escaped prisoner. I have two more Americans to hand over. Uh, you're corrupt. I've told your warden this here, and I'm going to get uh, three, four times more rich than what I would have if I had followed the original plan. And your guy, the prison guard, he gets detained. Hopper gets recaptured, and they pretty much punch and kick him whenever they find him. And um, that's that. So uh, <clears throat> things aren't looking too good for the characters. I think this this episode was better 
episode four was better than the first three episodes. I really think Strange that they've really managed to find their footing here. It's great. I'm happy with what we're getting. I hope that uh, they might be able to keep this up right until the season finale. Um, not as good as season one, but better than season three. Uh, they really, it's uh, it's a huge improvement so far. They, I'm starting to, to believe them when they say this is the darkest season and it's the best season so far. Like we all know, it's the longest. The episodes are feature length, and um, I don't mind the length of the episodes now. I think. You know, I, I'm starting to appreciate the length. It's just episode one has so much crap in it that didn't really need to be there, whereas now the story has just got to the point. It's not being built anymore. It's not, there actually, there is concrete content there to watch, it's, and it's all worthwhile. If you were to skip one episode now, if you skipped episode four, if you watched episode three, you skipped episode four, and watched episode five, you'd probably so be, be confused, you know, and that's what you want. You want a story that's consistent you know, that makes you want to watch the next episode. It is like 3 in the morning and I'm going to watch episode 5 and I have to work for the next 2 days.